I'm Kat McMurray, and I'm going to tell you a story about a king from Queens. Once upon a time, there was, and is, a village across the East River from Manhattan called Astoria. And if you were to take the ferry across the river and walk a couple of blocks up Flushing Avenue, and if it had been a warm, sunny morning, you would have seen in front of Mr. Robert Riley's drugstore a large dark sable and white collie sprawled on the sidewalk. And I'd like to think that members of my dad's family maybe patted him on his classic sun-warmed head as they passed by, because my dad's family was from Astoria. Anyway, Bruce did not belong to Mr. Riley. Bruce belonged to a woman named Evangeline Miller. And we don't know when Mrs. Miller asked Mr. Riley to take care of Bruce. But by 1914, when our story opens, Mrs. Miller was newly widowed. She had three children. And in quick succession, she opened an employment agency. Uh, she became a dance teacher and finally an actress. And the latter isn't surprising because at the time, Astoria was the center of the American film industry. Whatever the reason, she asked Mr. Riley if he would take care of Bruce. And Mr. Riley said he'd be delighted. He was a dog man, and he was an interesting fellow. One of the first families of Astoria. And he ran what he described as an old-fashioned pharmacy, what we would call today a compounding pharmacy. He made all his own tonics and uh, prescriptions, made everything by hand. He even marketed his own hair tonic, which he advertised in the papers, and which might have been the reason why Bruce's coat was so beautiful. Mr. Riley was delighted to take Bruce, and Bruce came to live with the Riley family, and probably enjoyed going out on the island to their summer homes, because we know Bruce enjoyed motoring. In 1915, Mr. Riley's approached by Mrs. Florence Kissel because the Queensboro Kennel Club is about to hold its first show. She's one of the organizers. The Kennel Club is applying for membership in the AKC, and this is one of the things they have to do, is hold a show. They advertise widely in the papers. Uh, it's an open match, which means come one, come all. Uh, enter at the gate. We don't do it that way anymore, but this is how they did it then. She asks Mr. Riley, can I show Bruce at Greensboro? He has no objection. Mrs. Miller has no objection. So Mrs. Kissel, who will go on to become a name in Airedales, shows Bruce at Greensboro, where he immediately catches the attention of a reporter from the New York Sun, who inquires after Bruce's breeding. Well, Mrs. Kissel doesn't know. So she sends a messenger back to the pharmacy to get Bruce's papers. And lo and behold, Bruce is descended from some of the greatest collies ever, uh, super luminaries whose names we still know as pillars of the breed. He was bred by Mr. John J. Griffin of Astoria, who bred high quality collies. And here he was from a drugstore in Astoria. This was a story. And the reporter wrote it up describing Bruce's beauty and uh, regal bearing and his humble beginning and the fact that he takes Bess Collie at Queensboro. Now up in the North Jersey Hills, there's a writer who reads this story and is immediately intrigued. Mr. Terhune is looking for a dog like his own collie, Laddie, is getting old, and he would love to have a dog like Laddie on deck. So far, Laddie's son, Wolf, isn't showing much promise. So he goes down to Astoria. It's only 35 miles from Sunnybank. Gets off the ferry, walks to the drugstore, and he sees Bruce. And what he sees is a very large collie, dark sable and white, with beautiful, massive coat, and he says, there was an air of majesty, of perfect breeding about Bruce, an intangible something that lent him the bearing of a monarch, a king.
Hmm. He makes an offer for Bruce. Mrs. Miller says no. She's already injured him at Westminster. She thinks she has a winner, and the winner could be lucrative. Well, come February, Mr. Terhune is at ringside at Westminster, and Bruce doesn't even place. He makes another offer, and this time Mrs. Miller accepts. So Bruce comes to Sunnybank, where he and Laddie are dear friends from the moment they meet. And that is how a colleague from Flushing Avenue, Astoria, came to Sunnybank and lived happily ever after. Thank <laughs> you.